it's been a trial and error methods <laughs> whenever i'm trying live something happens like just a minute ago i was live and the video was i was actually connected to bluetooth and so the sound was not good so i hope you can hear me can you hear me i hope you can hear me i hope this is a good sound now so um today i'm going to be talking about why clinical medicine is a good fit for you is a good career for you and this video is inspired by a question by one of my subscribers uh david danyunze he says that i am a form for liver and i wanted to do clinical medicine and surgery at diploma level what advice would you give is it a good career or one has to stay in east africa for employment kindly give me an insight of what i, I should do or if i may consider another course related to medicine that is a good question mr david and thank you so much for asking and so um a clinical officer is a mid level practitioner so you will be working under the guidance of a doctor right after school so um to be a clinical officer first of all you will need to pass your high school uh your high school kcse certification and you need to get a main grade of c to join kenya medical training college and pursue clinical medicine and surgery you need a kcse mean grade of c with c in english or kiswahili and c in biology c minus in chemistry c minus in any of the following which is mathematics and physics so basically you need a c in english or one of the languages and you need a c in biological sciences so you need to actually do well in your biology and one of the languages after you pass your kcse then you you join kmtc to pursue diploma in clinical medicine and surgery and that takes three to four three years uh, for diploma for degree it takes four years and after graduating from uh, clinical medicine and surgery then you will go ahead and do one year of internship in a teaching hospital and then after completing your internship then you will be licensed as a clinical officer otherwise known as registered clinical officers some people have known have been calling us rcos registered clinical officers now right right after school is when you do your internship you get licensed and then now you go into the world of practicing you will go to the hospital you will practice in different settings, different specialties and stuff like that. And so the workplace basically is usually the clinical settings. For example, the private hospitals, the government hospitals, the NGOs, the clinics and different specialties like, you know, running a clinic that is mainly a pediatric clinic clinic or an orthopedic clinic, for example. And even in the hospital, there are many specialties like uh, in the outpatient, you may be only seeing children. You may be only seeing people with surgical wounds. Um, you may be seeing people with, you know, reproductive health issues. So it depends with the hospital you, you get hired. And the associate degree that you will do, it's, it's, it comprises of in-class in work for i mean close to like six to eight hours per day and then you also have lab so lab you will practice on a mannequin i don't know i really don't know if now they practice on cadavers but in my time we practice on a mannequin and uh also like the you will also have like clinical practice so you'll go to clinicals and do your clinicals uh usually in in your first year in your second year and in your final year so
so let's go to the advantages of being a clinical officer number one is that you get to work in different specialties so as a clinical officer there are multiple specialties to choose from um as i said before like you can work in pediatric clinics uh, hiv and aids clinic tb clinic ophthalmology you know um you can work in outpatient emergency room uh, admitting patients uh, and so many other specialties and you will we will cover this even at close to the end of this video we will talk about the higher diploma courses that you 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 can do after your diploma level number two advantage is that you can open your own practice and be your own boss uh, i've seen you know i've seen so many clinics whose owners are clinical officers hospitals for example you you will find that the owner there is a clinical officer uh, several periphery periphery clinics in the in many counties run by clinical officers and so you can open your own practice after you get your license of course you will have like policies and procedures in place because the clinical officer council provide all those stuff and so you'll have those things in place just to make sure that the patients are safe Number three advantage is that you can join medical school after your clinical medicine degree. So you have a higher chance, like higher, you ha you've, you've acquired so much in clinical medicine and surgery. You have knowledge, you have the skills. And so joining medical school will not be too hard for you. And even like the medical school will be really easy and you know, you, you will enjoy the journey. The next one, number four, is that it's more affordable to start with than the MD route. So if you choose to start first with diploma in clinical medicine and surgery, it's more affordable than the medical school route. The next one, which is number five, is that there is autonomy. You become your own boss. You make your own decisions, your clinical decisions. Uh, be your own consultant in your own practice you open your own clinic run your own clinic make major decisions by yourself of course you will have policies and procedures in place again but you will be your own boss you'll be an entrepreneur the next one which is number six is that the classwork for clinical medicine and surgery are modeled on the clean on the medical school education so what you do in clinical medicine and surgery class is the same the same as the medical school classes so here i have my transcripts and <laughs> it's been a long time since i looked at these transcripts <laughs> and um you know i have like my first year transcripts second year third year and, and showing the grade and hours that I did, <laughs> that I did those credits. The first year you will do, uh, you will focus on anatomy, physiology. So anatomy is just looking at how the body parts, where the body parts are, location of the bones and stuff. Like it's very interesting. Physiology, how those parts function together in relation to the body. Parasitology. This was a really interesting um i mean class um you know dealing with parasites for example is really interesting microbiology dealing with bacteria i mean those stuff mm -hmm. pathology for example this is causing organisms and stuff pharmacology dealing with medication and therapeutics this one focuses on medication the side effects the name of the medication the dosage the route of administration and it's so so interesting and then also you have clinical practice which is clinicals so you go to the hospitals 
you do your clinicals there you practice on how to take history how to take physical examination how to to do your vital signs like the blood pressure temperature and stuff and then how to diagnose the patient so those clinicals are really important and i think during our time they were they were actually everything was mandatory if you miss them then you you go back <laughs> you go back another few months <laughs> And so they are really very strict. Now, second year. Second year, you focus on now medicine. Now you combine those, you know, the function of the body. If there is a disease in the body and what medication now you will give to treat the disease. And so like you're putting things together. You're doing surgery, for example. Like, you know, what are the complications after this surgery? What are the tissues and stuff like that? It's very interesting. So you do like, uh, you study about like, you know, arthroplasties, the hip surgeries, the shoulder, the knees. Gosh, <laughs> I can talk here until tomorrow. Anyways, you also deal with pediatrics, children, children, those vulnerable ages, less than five, you know, all that stuff. Obstetric and gynecology, women, family planning, uh, and then also like diseases like you know cervical diseases i mean everything 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 reproductive health clinical pharmacology of course pathology community health and then clinical practice which is clinicals and then for third year now you do like medicine it's more comprehensive now you you put together what you learn in first year and second year together and now you're kind of like you know you have some critical thinking if a patient comes like this you know presenting like this you know what are the systems that are infected or affected and then now what will i do to to make sure the patient is is uh, treated like what medication can i give or what 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 advice can i give the patient for you know for management you know side things now it's more comprehensive surgery you did with you deal with more like now more complicated uh stuff uh pediatrics the same thing obstetric and gynecology and then there is clinical practice community health and then there is health service management it's very interesting actually if you're passionate about medicine <gasps> Clinical medicine gives you like a good, good foundation. It gives you a good foundation. Yeah. It gives you a good foundation on how like, you know, this, this, this disease is affecting the body in this way. Um, this medication will treat this disease. Um, this lab lab results are you know indicates that this area of the body has a problem like you just you just have this it's so amazing yes so those are the transcripts for my um for my school i was in number number six right so the next advantage is number seven which is clinical officer gets to perform procedures um like inds venipunctures um suturing mvas for example uh, minor 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 surgeries when i worked in the operating room in one of the level five hospitals i did most of these things inds i used to have like you know abscesses drain those abscesses you do like you know minor school i mean minor wound suturing um and if you have like super large wound of course affecting the eye for example then you would need an ophthalmologist to come in and check the eye um and uh and all that stuff it's really interesting so that's number seven advantage number eight advantage is that you know the best part of being a clinical officer is that you get to help those patients in the periphery, like, you know, in the most vulnerable part in Kenya, where they don't have, you know, access to, you know, um, you're, you're, the, you're the, 
you're the first one to to see them and so you get to help them and see and and you know observe how they progress from being sick to getting well and i think that is rewarding that is really rewarding so the 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 number eight advantage is that you help the patient feel well there's that rewarding feeling that you get by doing that and also you provide counseling to the to the patient you're part of their journey to to healing actually yeah and then the uh, the next advantage which is number nine is that you because it's a multidisciplinary profession you will be working with doctors and nurses physical therapists occupational therapists you're working with nutritionists dietitians you're working with you know doctors general surgeons you're working with you know pediatricians you're working with anesthesiologists you're working with all these big big you know um, multidisciplinary it's it's a multidisciplinary profession and so you get to meet with them and learn from them and also network and build your network professional network like that and so i think that is a good advantage be it's a it's an advantage because you get to meet with these with these other professionals and you know by by networking with people you learn a lot of opportunities and you can learn about research for example they can introduce you to so many research that are out there and i think it's it it builds your skills and it builds your resume as well okay so that was that was the nine advantages of being a clinical officer so let's go to disadvantages so i came up with three disadvantages of being a clinical officer first of all because it's a multidisciplinary profession you have a role conflict so you know on social media one day as i was just going through my social media and i'm looking at this case there is this child basically and the child is like less than 10 years and the child has had like chronic uh, disease process and this child is obese weighing about like you know above probably 170 pounds which is like how many kgs uh maybe 80 maybe 80 kgs this child is less than 10 and obese has underlying medical conditions asthma diabetes and you know when you see that story i read the comments and one of the comments is from a doctor blaming the clinical officers for prescribing too much prednisone so I was like, what? Like, you know, you know, of course there is, there is the effects of prednisone, like water retention and all those other effects, right? But you're blaming your own colleague, you know, you're blaming your own colleague. Like, why, why do we do that? Why do doctors do that to CEOs? Why? Why? That is really pathetic. And it reflects on how you feel about yourself. The fact that we are really skillful we've trained for three years right we've done our one year internship right we are skillful we didn't go to school for nothing we are skillful we have the knowledge and so i don't see why there is too much conflict on the role of clinical officers and the fact that they are attacking and attacking it's not fair so anyway that is one of the advantage and i don't think it should be an issue who cares like you you studied for three years you did your internship for one year you are very learned and you're very skillful and so who cares just walk there like you know confident enough and just do your job the other disadvantage is that right after school your autonomy is quite limited because now you're working under the guidance of a doctor so your decision making basically the major decision making is basically from the doctor so right after school then you're working under the guidance of a doctor another disadvantage is that there is limited global employment for clinical officers because um clinical medicine and surgery 
is recognized in East Africa and parts of Southern Africa. And so the employment opportunities will be concentrated in those areas only. Clinical medicine and surgery is not recognized in the United States. It's not recognized in the in, in Europe. And so, excuse me, and so like there is limited global employment for CEOs. So that's another advantage. Anyways, um, I got really hyped up by that story. <laughs> and you can tell really, I don't like people like, you know, talking bad about the other profession. Anyways, because we are all colleagues, we work in the same settings and stuff like that. So anyways, I got really hyped up. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. I, I really apologize for that. All right. Let's see um, how much we get per month. Right. And so like, you know, I will just talk about my experience. Uh, you know, after graduating from KMTC Nairobi and then did my internship in Bagathi uh, District Hospital. And then the internship was unpaid. I don't know about, I don't know if they pay now for the clinical officers in towns. I don't know. Someone please tell me in the comment if they, if they now pay for clinical officers who are doing their internship. Because my time they did not pay. So yes, you may be paid during your internship or you may not be paid during your internship. Okay, after my internship, I got a job in in one of the private clinics in Mukuru Kwanjenga in Nairobi. And um, I I was getting paid 20,000 Kenya shillings, which is equivalent to, uh, there's a question here. It says, let me see. Oops, how do you check these questions? Oh my gosh. How do you check the questions? Okay, let me see top charts okay okay the question oh my gosh i can see the question let me see here sorry i can see the question i'm using my phone to record but i can i can look it up here sorry i really apologize hassan it's Hassan. Okay, here we go. Let me see here. Let me go to... How do you see the question? Can someone help me? How do you um, see the questions on the chat? Um, I really apologize. I don't know how to look at the question. Oh, maybe click on live then oh yeah okay how do i look at the questions wow okay i'm sorry hassan i can i don't know how to look at the question on, on this live stream <laughs> yes <laughs> so hmm, i have to figure that out i really feel bad all right I will answer you after this video. I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway, Hassan, I was talking about salary and I was talking about, um, you know, right after I completed my internship and I worked in a private setting, which was Mukuru Kwanjenga, and there was a clinic right there, just opposite Mata. I think it's been closed now. And they paid me 20,000 Kenya shillings, which is equivalent to... Um, to 200 dollars us dollars by then it's been a long time and so like then the unga unga prices were <laughs> were not really high like now it's crazy right now so like life was so easy then right and so i was comfortable with that one and then after a year i actually got posted to my own county which is bomet and I worked in level five Longisa District Hospital and I got paid 40,000 Kenya shillings, which is around 400 US dollars. So this, I'm giving you just a brief history about myself to tell you that it all depends on where you work. 
as a clinical officer. Some of you may be working in an NGO, non-governmental organization. Some of you may be working in a government hospital now, and they may have changed like how much you earn per month, and maybe it definitely it has changed. And so I would love to know, I would like to know how much um, you guys are earning right now, because you can just tell me like the range. You don't have to give me specifics, but it, I would love to know actually. So yes, it depends on where you're working. Another salary tip is that it depends on if you're doing some law comps and stuff like you may earn some, you know, um, extra money when doing some law comp side hustles. And the salary for a diploma level CEO is different from higher diploma registered CEO. So diploma for registered CEO with diploma no salary for a registered ceo with diploma is different from salary for higher diploma ceo so it's it's different so i have this friend of mine who did anesthesiology and he's a ceo registered clinical officer and i think i will invite him to come on board and tell us how he how how much he earns <laughs> how the school went and how to get into I mean um, higher diploma um, you know courses okay I think I did the salary right so the role of a clinical officer I'm really I apologize because I don't know how to access my questions on the live stream I, I promise to make sure that I <laughs> I know before coming live <laughs> because this is embarrassing but anyways i hope you understand but right after this video i'm going to answer all the questions roles of a clinical officer usually is just like a medical doctor basically taking history physical examination taking your vital signs and um diagnosing the patient counseling the patient and interpretation of labs and imaging results and then now prescribing medication and of course all this is like you know you're with a patient right there one-on-one -on -one. you're counseling the patient on the treatment the effects adverse events stuff like that so that is the role um and usually like you know most of the clinical officers work in a, the periphery clinics uh you know all that stuff so i think clinical medicine generally is a good career to start with especially if you have an end goal of being an md i think this is a good good career to start with you will never regret about choosing to be a clinical officer right <laughs> and i hope this helped you in deciding about clinical medicine and this this has been really a good live stream and with that being said please subscribe Please like, please um, share. I'm I'm really sorry, Hassan. I can actually see, but I can't click. How do you do this? When I click on the phone, I can't actually see the question. I just have to see the question. Hassan, if you're watching, because I just see your text, I mean your message, can you type that again? So I, it, it pops on the screen, and then after a while it disappears. So I don't know if you can retype that again. I can wait and then see what the question is. Yeah, and let me know where you're watching from. And so um, as we wait, I don't know if you will type that question. So yes, let me know which other questions you have and uh, in the in the next live stream, I will invite one of the friends that I have who did higher diploma in clinical medicine, and he will walk us through on how to on his journey. Uh, also, um, some of the higher diploma courses are pediatrics, ophthalmology, and most of these courses takes close like between twelve to eighteen months. And um, they are usually offered in Nairobi and also multiple locations. So 
they are offered in Kisumu, they are offered in Embu, Nyeri, Mombasa. If you are joining in, I am going through the higher diploma courses offered in KMTC. And these courses are offered in different locations, but most of them are offered in Nairobi. And so there are so many of them that have been added recently. Uh, the ones that uh, have been added are uh, addictive sciences, which takes 12 months in Mathare Hospital. And that one requires diploma in any health related course from KMTC or any other recognized inst institution. Um, also, there is family health, ophthalmology, dermatology, chest medicine, ENT and neck surgeries, anesthesia, mental health and psychiatry, ophthalmology, oncology and palliative care, audi audiology and hearing care technology, emergency and critical care medicine, orthopedics. So you see like there is wide variety of specialties that clinical officers can pursue. And it's, it's just like the sky is the limit for clinical medicine, okay? These are the higher diploma courses. And you see that the duration is not that much, between 12 to 18 months. And the locations are different. So let's take, for example, if you live in Mombasa, for example. In Mombasa, they offer family health, higher diploma in family health. And that takes 18 months. So all these courses are on kmtc.ac.ke website and that brings us to the end of this video i hope you like this live stream i will be going live uh, i think it's better for us to interact more on live stream and i will definitely fix that um <laughs> fix the 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 live stream uh text and chat so that i'll be able to answer you guys accordingly and so until next time i hope you have a great evening and i will see you in the next one bye